Hello and welcome back. If you haven't been following along by viewing the previous videos in the series and you're new to InfoPath, I recommend you view the previous videos in the series. This presentation covers views. You may be asking quite rightly, what are views? Put simply, you may not wish to print the shading or particular tables or sections. For example, you may have a section for office use only and your form filler doesn't use this section or need to print this. Your form fillers might not even need to see for office use only section. Creating views enables this. So for this presentation, I'm going to show you how to craft views. Before you even begin developing your form, it's good practice to analyze the organizational needs for the form. Once a business need has been agreed, as a developer, I begin to sketch out a rough design. I section the form into specific parts. I recognize when actual development begins, there may be changes. However, the basic outline structure will probably remain the same. What do I mean basic structure? I'm sure you have personal experience of printing a web page. You have little choice but to accept the page content may print onto multiple pages when ideally it would be better for the content to remain on the same page. Thinking at the design stage about where pages break should be placed can save considerable time and more importantly improve acceptance and form use. Believe me, I have learned that lesson the hard way. To create views, a single template is used. That's why it's important to spend time developing a flawless form template. I always name this view the developer's view. Look up at the ribbon and click page design. And in the view section, there is a button named properties. Click this. A views property window opens. Look at the view name and you will see view one as the name. I'm going to rename the, this form to developers. When you click OK, you will see the form's name as developers default. Using this template, I will create views for others by copying the entire form and deconstructing elements of the form to fit the needs of specific user groups. I do this by placing my mouse cursor within the form. Then I press and hold down the control key, then press the letter A. This highlights the entire form. To copy, I press the control key once again, and this time press the letter C. To copy. My next step is to click New View. A new window appears called New View, requesting a name for the view. Name it whatever you think your users will respond to. I'm going to call the form Restaurant Bar Assessors Form. Hopefully that's an explicit enough name for my users. When you click OK, a new table layout appears. Delete the table by making the table the active selection then click the cut button in the home tab or press the delete key on your keyboard. Having removed the default table, press the control key and the letter V. My developer's form copy appears. I can now remove sections, controls, etc. to suit my audience needs. I do this by selecting the parts I don't need, then clicking cut from the ribbon home tab, alternatively pressing the delete key on the keyboard. I repeat this procedure to create additional views. For example, office only, an express entry form, a print view. A word of caution prior to deleting sections, controls, etc. Check the fields pane to confirm fields aren't required. Deleting required fields prevents form users from using the form. When I begin developing a form, one of my first thoughts is to design a form to print. You might be thinking your form is an on-screen use only form. Consequently, designing the form to print is an irrelevance. Personally, I always design forms to print even if there isn't a requirement. Far easier to implement page breaks at this stage than to be asked to add printing features at a later stage. Believe me, this does happen. Besides, scheming the form to print helps with the form's design logic and users won't recognize the layout can print. If your form hasn't been configured to print and at a later date you receive a request to add printing, you may discover you have to start from scratch. 
Let me begin by demonstrating how to insert page breaks. I begin by opening a new empty template. Next, I look up at the ribbon and click Page Design tab. I click the Page Layout template button and select one. I repeat this. Now I click the ribbon insert tab. Moving my eye and cursor across the menus option, I see format section and a page break button. I place my cursor in one of the tables and you will notice page break button is grayed out. However, if I move my cursor to the bottom of the table outside the table, the page break button becomes active. I click and dotted line appears. A page break has been inserted. If I was to print this, the second table would begin printing on the second page. So key learning point, you cannot insert page breaks in tables sections. To create a print view, implement the steps shown in the first part of this video. Having created a print view and looking at the ribbon page design tab, I can see the and click the header and footer button to open the associated window. In this window, I can, for example, insert a footer page number. I click the footer button. Clicking the insert auto text drop down, I click current page. In the print form window, I can add space, then type of, add a space, then in auto text drop down, I select total pages. I can make this bold, I can underline it if I choose to. I click OK to close. If I want users to print multiple sections, I click the print multiple view button and select options I want to use to print. I can set the print run to implement page breaks by clicking the separate views drop down list and selecting page break. I can click OK to close windows. Next. I look up at the ribbon and in the page design tab I select a user view from the views drop down list. Next I click properties for the form view. The view properties window opens. In the general tab I can place a tick in the set as default view. Next I click the print settings tab. In the select an existing view to use when printing drop down list, I select the corresponding print view for the form. This binds the forms together. When I look at the views drop down list, I see developers view. I don't want users to see this, so I select the developers template. Next, I click properties, and in the view properties window, I remove the tick in the show on view menu when filling out the form. I click OK to close. I look up at the ribbon home and click preview form button. When the form opens, I look at the home tab and move my eyes and mouse pointer over to the current view drop down list. When I make a selection, I cannot see developers view. I can also remove the print view. I don't want users filling in the form using this. If I wanted to remove form views that only authorized personnel can see and use, I use an advanced feature to configure this. I won't cover this advanced capability in this video. Having removed the print view, my users now have no way to select the print view once they have filled in the form. I'm going to remedy this by adding a button at the top of the form. I begin by placing my cursor in the title row. Looking at the ribbon, I click Table Tools Layout. Next, I click Insert Row Below. The row is a little too high. I click the Cell Height button, and in a Tables Property window, I look at the Row Height at Least option. I will change the height to 15 pixels. Next, I click the Cell tab. In the cell padding top and bottom, I will set these two settings to zero. Next, I click OK to close. The row looks a little too high for what I require. I click the button Home tab and in the Format Text section I change the font size to 18. Now I have a single row spanning the entire table and no columns. I switch back to Table Tools Layout. I'm going to click the Draw section, Draw Table button and draw a line on the right hand side to create a column. I click the Table 
button to release the draw table button function, I place the mouse cursor in my newly created column. Next, I look up at the ribbon and in the Home tab, I click the Controls drop down arrow and in the Object section, click Button. Next, I click the button to make this active. Then, I right click to select Button Properties. In the General tab, in the Label, I type Print View dot dot dot, then I click OK. With the button remaining active, I look up at the ribbon and then in the Rules section, I click Add Rule. Under If Menu section, using my mouse pointer, I highlight when this button is clicked. When I do another submenu, it appears. I click Switch Views. The Rule Details window opens. In the View drop-down, I can select Print View and OK. That's it. Looking at the button, I can resize the button and center. I use my mouse cursor to show me a two-headed arrow. I hold the mouse button down and drag to reduce the size. Next, I want to center the button. Having resized the button, I can use the Table Layout Tools Tab Alignment Buttons and Home Tab Format Text Button to align the button. Next, I'm going to test the button's function. In the Home tab, I select Preview Form. When the form opens, I click the button. Now I'm satisfied with the button's functionality. I click Close Form Preview. In the Rules pane, under Details 4, I can name my rule. I shall name it Switch to Print View on Click. Descriptive rule naming helps form testers at debugging stage. Thank you for viewing this video. Hopefully you have found